on Nova Legends Podcast, I have Hampton Sydney coach Caleb Kimbrough, whose Tigers are in the Final Four of the 30 and 2 record. Uh, they just beat uh, Nebraska Wes Wesleyan, and they have a date. Uh, they're going to try to overturn a, a loss earlier this year to coach's alma mater, uh, Guilford. Uh, coach, uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having us on and highlighting the, the Tigers. Thank you. Yeah, well, you guys have quite a story. You've done an amazing job with this program. Let me give your background a little bit. Unfortunately, you're a Chapel Hill guy. I'm a UVA guy, so we're going to try to we're going to try to get through this uh, interview okay. Uh, but my dad and Hubert Davis' dad were golf partners and best friends growing up. I'm it's a little funny. older than Hubert, but uh, funny. I, I worked uh, Carolina UNC bass. I'm actually a big Duke fan. I grew up a Duke fan. Oh God! But my, I worked Carolina basketball camps growing up. I never told anybody I was a Duke fan. I just kept it under the yeah. Radar. That's like Crips and Bloods, isn't it? I know. Oh, it is. oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe worse. Uh, you had a great high school career, went to Guilford. Um, you you uh, started 108 games, which is a record at Guilford. Uh, some folk, old folks will know Guilford because that's where Earl B. Free and Emil Carr went to school. We all hated Emil Carr, but those are, uh, we all love Earl B. Free. He was a great player, Lloyd Free, when he was at Guilford. Um, you won the ODAC there, and it's the same conference that you're in today as coach of Hampton Sydney. Uh, you got to the NCAA, uh, I think you got to the quarters there. You also were ODAC ten, all, all ODAC tennis player, which I think is interesting. Um, then you, uh, you you played, you, you got into coaching, but you did do a stint with the Washington Generals. And I have to say, you had a very poor record against the Globetrotters. Uh, I don't know if you ever beat the Globetrotters as a player there, coach. Uh, but uh, anyway, you're six years as an assistant, um, I think at Guilford, one year at Washington in Lee. Um, and then you're uh, three years head coach at Huntington College in Alabama, I believe. Turned that place around. They were winless when you started at Christmas and able to get them on the winning track, left there with a 500 record. And since 2019, you've been at Hampton Sydney. You're also the strength and conditioner coach across um, sports, which is cool. Um, you know, last year you had an incredible year 14 and 2 in ODAC, 22 and 7. Uh, got to the NCAA second round, first time in 10 years. You guys have gotten uh, Hampton Sydney's been in. In the NCAA, uh, it was only the I think the fourth 21 season um, over the last 20 years, um, and you're ODAC Coach of the Year last year. Uh, Coach, did I get most of that right? Uh, yeah, I, I I think that a lot of those things are true. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly, huh? Right. Yeah. Well, let me let's start off. I want to ask you where uh, Division Three basketball is now. Um, you know, I don't get to see a lot of it. We don't have tons of Division Three teams. In our general area, we have Marymount and then um, Shenandoah is not too far. And then um, uh, Mary, Mary Washington, of course. But all I know is players that I would have thought were going to go to Division One years ago are more often going to Division Three now. So from my perspective, Division Three basketball is as strong as ever. Where, where, where do you see Division Three ball now? Well, I'll tell you what, you got Shenandoah in your backyard. Uh, Nick Doyle is the, the new head coach there. Been there a couple of years. And you're talking about you should get him on the podcast. That guy's uh, up and coming star, man. He's really got that that program turned around. Um, yeah. Division three basketball. Now it's funny because I I um, played several sports growing up, but I didn't. I was not familiar with Division three basketball when I got into it. When I went to Guilford, and just had a very good experience and became very passionate about it. And I think now my viewpoint on Division three ball is, is well, one, it's it's all I really know. You know, so it's, it's a, I have a love for it because of that. And then I think the other part of it is it just feels like the truest form is still like amateur sport. And, you know, in today's world where, um, you know, it seems like right now with trans, it's like transferring and asking for, for money, name and image likeness and those kind of things. It seems like at a division three level, although it, it does trickle down to us a little bit, um, I think you get guys who genuinely just love the game. You know, they're not given uh, a full basketball or athletic scholarship. Um, they're probably given some merit academic money to go to school. They probably take out a little bit of loan, have to pay. Um, and, they're you know, you get gym rats. You get guys that do it for the pure love. I know that's how I was, and that's what we target when we try to recruit. And, you know, there's a lot of joy in what you do with your work when you're when you're coaching guys who, who love it, you know, like you did. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. I think 
you know, Division three basketball is probably at a, you know, one of the best places it's ever been, maybe, uh, you know, with so many people just targeting transfer athletes at higher levels, I think we're able to attract a very high caliber player, um, you know, right out of high school. And I think, uh, you know, you see that with our team right now, where we not only brought them in, but they're guys that love the school and, um, you know, not looking to bounce around and they've stayed and now, you know, we are where we are. So I, I think you see that in a lot of places. And um, yeah, I think more people, I think more people that people just don't know about division three basketball. So I, I feel like if um, the exposure is probably the biggest, biggest thing that we're lacking, but I think you see a lot of people on Twitter and so on and so forth, trying to uh, push division three a little bit more. And, and that's great. I hope they do. Yeah. How's the portal and, and then the COVID year affected Division Three? I know in soccer, a lot of the coaches I talked to, uh, some of them got uh, players in for the last year, the graduate students who played other places. Maybe their conference didn't allow uh, that, that fifth year, like Ivies or something like that. Uh, uh, is, it, is, is, the, is the portal in the COVID year really affecting um, Division Three programs as well? The COVID year, definitely. You know, with everybody gaining a year, like right now we have three guys in our team that are fifth year seniors and you know, that's a big deal. I mean, all three of these guys contribute, um, but it's not only like the on court, you know, they know what's going on. Um, uh, you know, they're just so mature and how about they go there, how they go about their business, but you, you see that at, at several other places as well. Um, and then I think at some division threes, the transfer piece really affects uh, the team. You know, he, at Hampton Sydney, we don't have graduate school. So it's, it's a little bit harder to get a transfer in. You'd probably have to target somebody that was leaving after their freshman year, you know, from another place uh, because of our academic requirements. Um, but other places, you know, you can, someone's someone's played three years and, or maybe four years and had a redshirt year and they could come in and, uh, you know, go to graduate school for a year. Guilford's a good example of that. The team we play, and they have like a one-year graduate program, I think Coach Palumbo told me, and, you know, you can go in for a year. So I think we have several schools like that in our league. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely something that it makes it fun and allows you to continue to be an older team if you want to be. Yeah. Well, Coach, you've done an amazing job turning Hampton Sydney uh, into a, a Final Four team. Um, you had three years as a head coach at, at Huntington, um, what are some of the things you learned in, in, as a as a first time head coach? Because I I would think being a first time head coach, you're managing other coaches, um, uh, you're making the final decision. It's a lot different than when you're an assistant, even though assistants are very important. Did, did you learn a lot in those three years that you've been able to use at Hampton Sydney that's that's brought you great success? Without a doubt, <laughs> feel as though I learned that you know I really have no I really had no idea what was going on. I think, you know, when you're an assistant coach, you're really dialed in, at least I was, to doing whatever was needed for the program. But it's, you know, a, a lot of times that's not making the decision that the head coach makes. So, right, your mind is just not, you know, I, as I progressed, uh, I guess, and as assistant, more and more I was able to make big decisions, but it's never the final decision, right? And, uh and I think going, you know, you go and you think you know it all as a, as a as a coach, and you get your first head coaching job. And yeah, I was, I was, it was a rude awakening. It was a rude awakening, you know. I think just that from everything, uh, for me, it was one. I I, I was about to get married, <laughs> moving to Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, I had recruited, you know, North Carolina, basically in Virginia, DC, a little bit, basically my whole career and now I was recruiting Florida, Georgia, Alabama, uh, Tennessee. So I was learning a new recruiting territory, learning a new administration, learning a new uh, the academic requirements, the way financial aid works at the school. Um, and then it was the whole culture bit. You know, the reason I had an opportunity at the job is because the program had not been doing well. So uh, then it was about, oh, really, the X and O piece, it's, it wasn't about what I knew. It was about know what I could get my team to do and uh, how I could motivate them and teach them. And I thought that was a really important lesson for me moving forward is, you know, I need to, I need to listen a little bit more, you know, and, and do, you, know, you obviously need to lead and, and you need to 
teach, but I, I need to do a little bit more listening because everybody is, is led a different way and, and at a different pace. And, um, you know, I think it's given me a little bit more patience there to, to learn the people that are in front of me instead of just uh, demanding something that I feel like is right. Yeah. Who are your biggest influences in terms of the way you coach and the way your teams play? Hmm. I would say, well, I just got off the phone with probably one of my biggest influences. His name is uh, Nate Davis, a pastor Davis. Now to me, <laughs> me, he was coach Davis. Uh, you know, he was a coach of mine when I was younger, growing up in, in Chapel Hill. Um, just an enthusiastic, just best person in the world. Um, he called me with some encouraging remarks, but also you know, Adam Hutchinson, who I, who I worked for at Washington and Lee, was just a brilliant basketball mind, but also I think somebody who just really took the time, had a lot of patience with me as a young coach, uh, I think saw the good in, instead of you know probably all the mistakes that I was making and, and took the time to mentor me. Um, and then going back to work for Tom Palumbo at Guilford, you know, he's probably, I played for him for four years and then worked for him for six years. That's like 10 years, you know, he and his whole family. I mean, I, I mean, they're the absolute best. Um, and I've had a, a major influence just, you know, Tom, Tom has, uh, insane success in the basketball. Like people don't know his story. He's a women's head. He's never been an assistant coach. He's a women's head coach. He's a men's head coach. Um, the way he got into it is a very interesting route, but uh, I think he carries himself with this fierce competitiveness, but also is very humble. And I, and I thought being around him for so long, you know, th those things were things that really rubbed off on me and that I'm appreciative of. Um, and then probably my dad. I mean, I'm a preacher's son. So I feel so like, I. Yeah, I love it. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, maybe not as specific to X's and O's, but just, I think, you know, how to be respectful, how to care for people, how to build relationships. Um, I think without even knowing it, I probably uh, developed some of those traits just from, you know, growing up in the church and being around, being around my dad. Yeah. So when, when you come to Hampton, Sydney, it's interesting. Uh, I, I, you know, I have family in, in Long, in um, Farmville, so I'm very familiar with, with the area, also Pamplin, Cumberland. Um, and my roommate, when I was in law school, was a Hampton, Sydney grad, and he's talking about school all the time. And then one of my favorite athletes there now, uh, Mason Cunningham, he's a football player, wide receiver. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, don't, I know Mason. I know Mason. Yeah. Yeah, Mason and my son were just a magical midfield in soccer. Mason can play some basketball too. Probably not quite your level, but that boy can play some basketball too. He's such a he's such a great competitor. But but anyway, generally, I noticed that a lot of your kids are from northern northern part of North Carolina. Um, you got some you got some Virginia kids. Well, what kind of kids do you get? Is it much different than the kind of kids at Guilford we get? Uh yeah, no, I I, I think the schools are are very different. Um mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, not only locate, like Guilford's in a, in a city, uh, Farmville is obviously more rural. Um, I mean, there's a lot of differences between the two schools. Uh, I think we target people that really value, you know, Hampton City is all male, right? And it's rural. And when you come to campus, you feel this sense of community that, in my opinion, you don't really feel a lot of places. It's, it's incredible the, the amount of support that people have for the school, the pride they take you know, as alum and just supporters, um, the way the community gets behind you. Uh, so when we bring people there and we we preach a lot about, uh, you know, what are all the the perks of being an all-male school? We, we feel like this separates us in all the great ways. There's the obvious negative way, right? Oh, man, well, where are the girls? Because, I mean, I, well, I'm in college. Well, um, we seem to have no problem getting over that hurdle, but we, we try to get everybody to see the positives. And, and I think – the recruits we attract see that and it's clear to them and, you know, they, they love it. And you can, you can tell right away it clicks for them and, you know, they come and they stay and, and they have great careers both on the basketball court and in the classroom because of it. Um, but not everybody gets it and that's okay. You know, I don't think Hampton Sydney is for everybody, but we, we've, where we get our recruits from, you know, I came into Hampton Sydney. I mean, we'd love to get recruits, right right in our backyard four hour radius whatever it is but you know at first um there was other teams in the state that had, were having more success than us and you know we we had to travel a little further 
to to go find guys we thought were going to help us get to the next level. And I think we've developed now, you know, these connections to these places. And, you know, Georgia's been really good to us, North Carolina, obviously, but we always recruit Virginia and uh, D.C. and the surrounding area. Yeah. Well, this is an exciting time um, for farm wheel basketball. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm zoning out on the, on the Longwood coach. He's a great coach. Uh, you know, I believe that they won their conference tournament. Uh, are, are you guys friends? Are you guys, you guys talk, uh, talk basketball. We are Griff Aldrich. Yep. Griff, yeah. Griff, Sorry. Griff, uh, oh yeah. Griff, Griff is the man. And yeah, he's right. When I got to Farmville, I mean, he's connected. Our wives are friends. Um, you know, we see those guys all the time. He's, uh, you know, obviously in season, it's tough to see each other a lot, but out of season, you know, the whole staff actually over there, close friends with Ronnie Thomas, who's one of the assistants over there, and and really all of them, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, yeah, he's he's great. They won it. They won it this year, and they won it a couple of years ago. He he's flipped that place upside down, man. I mean, the whole whole community goes crazy uh, to go to the Longwood games. It's a lot of fun to see it. It's a great story. I think he made his millions doing something in a got into coaching. I did, I did want to ask you, coach, how does um, being a tennis player affect your coaching? I would think um, the concentration and the failure of tennis um, would, would would put you in a good mindset to, to talk to kids, like things like foul shots or just the pressure that you, that you face in basketball. Does that set you apart as a coach? You think your tennis background? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't know that I've maybe tapped into how tennis has helped me as a coach. I mean, that's something that maybe I should look into a little bit. <laughs> I, I grew up playing tennis and, you know, you talk about it, it is like a very, you know, individual sport. I mean, obviously singles individual sport where the mental game is a huge part of it. Um, we actually have a mental skills coach on our team. His name is Roger Kitchen and he's really changed the game for us. But yeah, I, I, I've, I've read some books about, you know, the, the mental game and uh, tennis books about the mental game, but it's like, I, I don't think I've reflected on personally how it's helped me in coaching. You know, that's a, yeah, maybe I need to do that. Or maybe it's, maybe it's already part of what you're doing. You're not, not even know it. Right. Um, what about as a strength and conditioning coach? I would think since um, uh, Hampton Sydney has tasked you with that for the whole uh, pro, uh, the whole athletic program, your teams must be physically in great shape. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't do it for, you know, we, all the coaches kind of get certified type of deal. And oh, got you, got you. Um, but it's uh so we have lots of guys who help and, and that kind of thing. But no, it it is something I had to do at Guilford. It's something I did at Washington Lee. It's something I did as an assistant for several different programs. So I don't I don't claim to be an expert, but I have <laughs> I have learned a lot and it's been I think it's been extremely helpful to not only target how to get bigger, faster, stronger, but to be sports specific um to to work on things that are that prevent injury you know to to helping guys in that way has been key especially going off into the summer division three a lot of times you don't have your guys back all summer so developing plans for an individual that might cater to specific to the individual as opposed to just throwing them a, a broad plan has been great yeah well let's talk about your team a little bit that's why I'm sure uh, I, you thought I was going to get you on this call uh, for. Uh, you're, you're led by Davison uh, uh, Hubbard, who 15.7 rebounds a game. He's a senior. Does that mean he has one more year of eligibility, or is he finished? Does he? he does have one more year I mean, of eligibility, but yep. No, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Coach. No, no, no. He, he's he's finished. He'll be finished at Hampton Sydney, but he does have one year left. He may use at another institution. Oh, he, but he can't use that at Hampton Sydney. Well, we don't have, he'll be graduating. Oh, gosh, gotcha. yeah, 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 I see. I just want to pay a bunch of money. You know, I wish we had a way to get him back. Like a double major or something. Um, yeah. Adam Adam Brazil, another senior, uh, 13 uh, points a game, 41% in three-point land, uh, two two to one assist turnover ratio, three rebounds a game. Those are, that's an incredible stat line. Um, uh, Ryan Clements, a fifth-year player, 11 points a game. Um, uh, Josiah Hardy, I live in Lansdowne up in Northern Virginia and Ashburn is right down the street from me. So he's from, he's from Ashburn, I believe. He's 51% from the field, four rebounds a game. Uh, I think Alex English, did I get that right? Uh, senior? Elliot. Elliot, I'm sorry. Alex English, it'd be nice to have him on your team. Um, but, but this, Alex Elliott's a great, a really good player too. Um, that, that, so tell us a little bit about your team. Those, those are some of the high scorers that you have. Yes, I mean, these guys have been 
starters for us for a while. You know, we had a play, one of our starters get injured, DJ Wright, early in the year, mm-hmm. who was a starter. And, and, you know, Alex stepped in the role. I really feel like we have probably six, seven guys who could be starters. So I think that that's a testament to our team, just how selfless they are and guys want to play roles for us to get the most out of the group. But yeah, that group together, I mean, it, it's unbelievable how they support each other because, you know, I'll give you an example. So, you know, Davidson, you know, has a, has the highest scoring average, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have Adam who, you know, he has a, a good scoring average. Sometimes he scores two points. Sometimes, he, you know, last game we played, he had 20-something points. And and then you have Ryan who, you know, doesn't get enough credit. I mean, he, he fills up the stat sheet um, and – you know, he just wants to he just wants to win and so he, he's not worried about the accolade and and he, he does whatever it takes to get it done and you know we really commend him for that I think you see that across the board because a guy like Josiah Alex I mean even guys that are coming off the bench I mean these guys are playing roles for us when they could be on another team and and maybe shoot the ball more or have have be, be the star guy or whatever what you want to call it um but for this team, you know, we have a collection of guys that they they really just want to win. And when we talked about, well, what do we have to do to do that, to achieve these goals that we want to achieve? It's like, well, I mean, being selfless and being coachable is going to be one of the biggest keys. And, you know, how do we do that? Well, we got to develop relationships with each other. We got to trust each other and then pour into it. And you know, and that selfless piece is going to be, be it. So I think that's what you see with our team is any like Josiah uh, in one of the games, 20 points. You see the guys, are, they're fired up for Joe, right? And then the next night, Adam, you know, is shooting the ball a ton and um, everybody's pumped for him. So I don't, you don't see guys sulking on the sideline just because of the stat sheet, which unfortunately is, is you know, something that you see a lot these days is, every you know, everybody just wanting to score and get the accolade. So – you know, our group, it's, it's pretty amazing how they've dedicated themselves to a common goal. And because that, that's common coach talk. Hey, guys, we all got to be, you know, one. And but to really have a group that's committed to it. I mean, that's when you achieve some, some unbelievable things. And that's what you're seeing with us this year. Absolutely. One thing that jumps off the a couple of things that jump off of the uh, statistic sheet for you guys. is You guys shoot a very high percentage. Uh, the other team shoots a very low percentage. That's always very helpful. But as you said, your, your points are very well distributed and your minutes are very well distributed. You don't have you don't have a lot of guys that are playing more than 30 minutes. You have a lot of guys that are playing between like 22 and, and 32 minutes or so. So it's not, And then a lot of guys in the teens. So you, you, it looks like you're able to to go deep into to your bench. Did I read that right, Coach? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, we have – our depth is one of the, the reasons we've had success this year. We think, or our depth, I would say, and the fact that we could be unpredictable. You can have a different person stepping up each night. So I think what you're seeing is exactly that. You have a guy like, uh, you know, just the other night, Shane Fernald came off the bench for us and scored like six straight buckets or something like that. And, you know, then he comes out of the game and then you put Miles Harris in and he hits a three or two threes from the corner and then, Nick Shryock makes a play. You know, it's it's like one after the other after the other, and then you your starters come in fresh and finish the game, and you know, and while the opposing team starters uh, are winded, I mean, it's yeah, it's it, it's something that we've been able to do all year. Is who's hot? And who's the, who's the guy we need to go to? Let's stick with them. Let's stay fresh, and it allows us to play at a, a certain intensity for the course of forty minutes, which is something. Yeah we really uh we really want to do yeah absolutely so you know coach um obviously the expectations were pretty high going into the season uh because you had you have a very seasoned team you had a great record last year you know got you won a ncaa tournament game which is great for your confidence uh i can see two uh, important points early in the season you lose to guilford and you know they're you're a tough team and you got to play them this week uh but then you beat john carroll and i believe they're number one and you beat him at their home court by 18 points so those are those, those must have been two huge moments for the team this year I would say so I would say two two big moments you know going against uh Guilford at Guilford you know I thought we got a little too big for our britches right <laughs> thinking 
Um, you know, we could just cruise maybe. I, I mean, you know, I, I, we certainly weren't talking about that the week before, but we just didn't play our best ball. And you go in there against any team in our league and they'll expose you, especially on the road. And I thought Guilford did that against us and it helped us. It really, you know, it was unfortunate that we lost. We never want to lose, but it, it definitely – got us going and, and refocused us going up to John Carroll. I mean, we wanted to play a non non-league play to prepare us for the ODAC. We thought we had a good team. So we wanted to go challenge ourselves. I mean, we didn't know John Carroll was going to be the number one team in the country, but uh, you know, we, we knew they were going to be really good and they were good the previous year. So going up there was great. And, and we went up there for the challenge, but you know, our guys live for those kind of moments. I mean, they want to be, they love to compete. Uh, they love the challenge um and going on the road I you know I just think it's great for our guys because you you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation um it's different you know maybe you're a little bit more tired because you're out of your routine and how are you going to respond right yeah. are you gonna sit here and talk about all the things that you have no control over or are we going to lock in on the things that we can control and so I give our guys a lot of credit they they're really locked in and you know, it took us a while to get in the groove of the game. John Carroll plays up tempo and gets up and down. But once we did and figured out, you know, where where what we need to do, yeah, we took care of business, and that was a huge win for us. Yeah. Well, I really don't want to focus on the negative because you just destroyed everyone over the last month or so. You know, most of your wins have been 10, 15 point or or more. But you did lose the Randolph making. I know they have a great great young coach as well. Uh, they have a local player, uh, Margot Closer, and who I. I just love um, and big fan of him. Uh, is it when you lose to Randolph Macon? Is that is that a big uh, uh, interstate rivalry? Oh, it's huge rivalry, huge rivalry. Um, runs deep in every sport, you know, across the board. So, and you know, those guys have had our number. I don't, I don't know if we could call it a, really a rivalry since I've been in Hammond City. You know, we, <laughs> this is the first year we beat them. Um, we beat them at their place, and then they came down, and we had a we had a battle at our place. So it's uh, yeah, those guys, I mean, Josh Merkel for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've got great freshmen, like you just mentioned, they've had a role in, you know, they made it this year, you know, everyone's like, Oh, making, I guess they lost in the sweet elite eight or sweet 16. Um, man, the freshmen, like, you know, it's like, they've done it every single year. Uh, so I'm going to give those guys a lot of credit on just how well they're coached and just their winning pedigree. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a huge game. It's a huge game. Oh, you're going to hear about it around Hampton, Sydney, if, if you don't take care of business in that one. So I've heard about it <laughs> for quite some time, and I heard about it after that game for sure. Well, you seem to have got the message because the boys have been playing amazing. You couldn't you couldn't have played better uh, leading into the Final Four. Let's talk about Guilford again. What, what are some of the keys now? Now, in, in Virginia, in the Virginia State playoffs, high school playoffs recently, I do a lot of the high school games here. South Lakes, they have a big recruit Jordan Scott you may have heard of him he uh they lost big to Patriot the first time and I felt like when they beat him in the state final last week Patriot was a little complacent losing beating this team big they, they it kind of didn't work to their favor and I thought they didn't make the adjustments because South Lakes had a plan and destroyed them by 30 35 points in the state final um do, do you think the, the fact that you lost to Guilford it, it could be a benefit to you guys and that you, you can motivate the kids and you know what you you know what you did wrong, or you can at least address it. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. I think about it at this point. We're in the we're in the final four of the NCAA tournament. I think at this point, every every team, at least us, it, it doesn't really matter who's in front of you, right? I mean, your sense of urgency, your mm -hmm. preparation, um, you know, your excitement, your energy uh, towards towards going to play your best ball at the right time. I mean, that's. I think that's what we're focused on. I, I don't think whether we would have won that game at their place by 20 or or lost by 20, maybe at this stage, because you know, it was so long ago when we played them. You know, so both teams are are so different in a lot of ways, right? Similar personnel, but but so different in a lot of ways. So no, I think our guys our guys are are motivated. It probably doesn't hurt that we lost the last game, right? Because you know, it, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Um but I think our guys would be ready regardless. What kind of team? What kind of team is Guilford? Uh, Guilford's like a slow tempo. Um, you know, they they try to lull you to sleep a little bit, as I as I'd like to say, I guess. 
Um, but they're very, they're a very disciplined team. I mean, they're a very talented team. Uh, probably one, you know, they only play about six, seven guys. And so, you know, but they have two fifth year guys that are just extremely talented and they score it, um, rebound it really well. And, you know, defensively, you know, they make you make shots, right? I mean, you, you have to, um, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to give up a lot of stuff near the basket. And so you, you've really got to work uh, your possessions on the offensive end to get good looks. And I think, you know, you got to make sure you secure the rebound on the defensive end uh, against their offense. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a team that, I mean, if you see in the previous games that they play with the tempo of, of play, like a, a four to six point lead for Guilford to them, you know, is, is it really feels like maybe a 10, 12 point lead, you know? So it's, it's, it's one of those teams where you don't want to get on that side of it. If you can get off to early start, it's, it's usually pretty helpful. Um, but it's, it's going to be a battle. I mean, we've, you know, me and coach know each other well, and, and it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a knockdown drag out. It'll be a lot of fun. Does it mean anything to the game that you, that you played there and coached there is it, at this point? Is that, does that stay with you at all? I, th I, I think it's really a really neat memory that we're going to have together. You know, we've had so many memories together, me and uh, coach Palumbo. And this is, I mean, obviously it'd be nice if we could play each other in the championship game. Right. I mean, that would have been, that would have been really fun, but I think, at this stage we're playing in the final four and one of us gets to go play for a national championship. And yeah, you know, that's really neat. Right. I mean, and, and it's a mentor of mine and it's somebody I, I really care about. So it's no, I, I, I view it as something that's a really special, uh, special event and is going to be a special memory for me personally. Yeah. So, so when you do a final coach, is this the first final four you've ever been to as a coach? Uh yes. How about a player? Did in high school did you get to the final four? Or... No, this is the first time I've been this far as a player okay. or coach. Yeah. I lost in the first round of districts in high school. So that's as far as I ever got. So uh I can't, I can't, I can't talk. Um, so when you think about the tempo of this thing, um, you know, you get four or five days off or whatever it is, and you so you have, you have a lot of time to play for Guilford. And then you have uh, Trine or Trine and Trinity, right? You know, when, when you're when you're in this situation, do you even worry about um scouting for the final? In case, you know, in, in the event that you win, you put all, you know, all eggs into the uh, Guilford basket. How do you approach the, a two game set like this? We're all in on the, on the game that's right in front of us. Yeah. We're all in on it. I mean, it's the most important game we've really all year. That's, that's the way we operate. We just, what's right in front of us. How can we be present? How do we get the most out of uh, this? How do we prepare the best for, 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 for that game? And we're going to do the same for Guilford. I mean, that's the one that's right in front of us, and that's the one we're preparing for right now. Yeah. Well, Coach, man, this has been great. I'm so, so uh, glad to meet you. Uh, you seem like an amazing guy. Um, it's very easy to see why you're so successful. I uh, can't wait to watch the game. It's I'm sure it's going to be streamed. Is that right, Coach? I believe so. I think the Final Four games are just on the NCAA website, like NCAA.com or .org or whatever it is. And then the championship game, they said, is – is on CBS Sports, but it's like it's delayed. I think it's going to be, you know, they record it and play it later uh, than, than the actual time. Well, good. Well, after hearing about all these players, can't wait to see them play. But look, I just wish you the best of luck. I really appreciate you taking time. I know that you probably have a million people calling you all of a sudden, and all of a sudden you've gotten so popular, Coach, but I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. I hope we can keep in touch. Yeah, let's definitely do that. One one of these days, I, I have family there. One day I'm going to show up in Hampton, Sydney, look you up, and ho hopefully you don't act like you never heard of me before. <laughs> no, come on, man. You got, you got to talk. Hey, the, the real the real guys behind the scenes are my assistant, Bryson Gibson, Carson. Those are the guys you need to talk to. Bryson Gibson, Carson Long. They're the oh, real. Definitely. I definitely will. And if you see my, my friend Mason Cunningham around, tell, tell him I said hi. I sure will. I sure okay. will. All right. Best of luck, Coach. All right. Take care. Yeah, you too now. Yeah, bye-bye.